Hey, you just on time. Wow, I just got on. Okay, let me. I was just typing. I'm going live with you. What's up? What's up? What's happening? How you doing? <laughs> I'm awesome, man. So I just wanna, I just wanna type quickly. Cool. You wanna print uh, something? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, there you go. Yes. How are you? I had to kind of get my lighting fixed a little. <laughs> I'm good, how are you? <laughs> I'm awesome. Wow, your, your, your lighting is popping. Listen, I it's not a ring light, but it's working. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's working. amazing, man. <laughs> So What's anyway, um, thank you, thank you for doing the interview with me. Yeah, of course. So I just, you know, every 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 other night or so, I just chat to some of my favorite DJs, Yay. you know, so that we can just catch up to find out, you know, what you've been up to, and mm. you know, just to share your story with, you know, um, some of my people, your people, and just yeah, get yeah. to know each other, man, you know. Yep. Because. And I choose people that I think are interesting. So shout out to you. <laughs> yeah, I'm very interesting. Well, I mean, I would like to say that I'm quite interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You, you are interesting. And I think it's fitting that I'm talking to you during Freedom Day because... Yeah, you know, yeah, that too. Uh, you, 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 yeah, you're, very, you're a very free-spirited person. You're very colorful, you yeah. know. So yeah, man. So I just want to get to know you better. Sure. So yeah, CC the dancer. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> what's your real name? So um, people call me CC, but my full name is Sisipo, which obviously like means gift if you if you identify with that. Um, so yeah, that's where like that's why CC is everywhere or SI is kind of everywhere. Mm. And then and yeah. then Sonor, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Sen yeah, 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 Sen you actually are. Jeez, a lot of people, when they pronounce it the first time, just it's everywhere, it's jumbled. Um, but yeah, it's Sinwa, and that basically is just like the two letters of my name, which is S-I, apostrophe, noir, which is black in French. Ooh, that's very really clever. Fancy. Fancy. <laughs> Why French, though? Um, because, so, when I was in high school, um, I did French from grade 8 to grade 11. Uh, well, technically grade 12, but, um, and I used to use the word noir to describe literally everything in all my essays. Um, it's kind of got like a bit of like a classy, edgy feel to it. Um, and then, yeah, when I was coming up with my name, I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to take C because that works, put an apostrophe, and then I used noir. But I used the masculine version because, you know, like European languages, there's always like a, a feminine like mask version of every word so i used the masculine mm -hmm. version just because i wanted to kind of play on like the whole um gender identification and not really having to specifically be put into a box of like any gender you know yeah <laughs> wow so 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 i i'm guessing you you don't really support the notion of female dj well, I do, you know, I really, um, it's quite an interesting question as well, because I know a lot of female DJs don't really like to identify as female DJs, but I think it's quite important for us to, you know, put out there that, yeah, we are just DJs, but we are female DJs and we are here to take up a lot of space, you know, because as soon as you mention that you're a female DJ, people kind of don't take you seriously already. I, like from experience as well, a lot of guys and whatever are just like, mm, she's a female DJ. Um, and everyone's like, no, I just want to be a DJ. And I'm like, no, we should, we should mention that we are female DJs and we are here to take up space. So, yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's I, don't, I don't mind, basically. I really don't mind, you know. Um, yeah. Gat, yeah. Gat, Gat is sending you a shout out. She, uh, he's saying that you're, you're beautifully framed. How, how, hey, how do you get your hair done during the lockdown? Thank how did that happen? So, oh my gosh. So, okay. Um, I will be honest with you guys and show you. So I usually shave the size of my head. And during lockdown, we obviously all are struggling when it comes to any kind of like going to the salon and getting our nails done. Like I've currently done my own nails because usually my nails are on fleek. 
you know, my hair is growing out on the side and usually I have a barber that goes like in, like with designs and like cool things on the side and like my fro is starting to come out of my actual hair. <laughs> <laughs> things are really but you look good so you look good i know well, i've managed to kind of like keep it together you know we gotta keep it together <laughs> mm. wow <laughs> and then and then you know you, you you always have these colorful hairstyles like colorful braids you know like what, what, what draws that inspiration from um i think it's like a mood thing you know like honestly like i i feel like um Every time I choose and pick colors, I usually have an idea in my head. And then my friend, my friend does my own hair, actually. So I pay her, she comes over and she does my hair and we chat and we watch Netflix. Um, and I usually have an idea and we never ever end up doing, like going with that, that idea. It just never works. It kind of just works on, yeah, like we, we'd, we'd see a color, mix it, and then be like, oh my gosh, that's really nice, actually. Yeah, maybe I actually feel like yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, great. And then, and then it always just comes up looking really nice. Do you know? Um, mm -hmm. Surprisingly, but not surprisingly. So it's, sometimes it's a bit of pressure because I'm kind of running out of ideas. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, it, it look, it, it, it looks awesome. It looks awesome. You, 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 and yeah. Shoma Josie are the two people with the most you know, colorful hairstyles and, and, and it works for you guys. It works for your brands. So yeah, yeah man, keep it up. So, right. so, so yeah, um, you know, I, I met you um, at, a, at a party. So you're a DJ and, you know, I'm drawn towards DJs because I'm like, oh, you're a DJ. What kind of music do you play? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So yeah, you know, so just tell me about your journey into the music game. How did it start? So essentially, um, to give you like back, back history, um, I'm a classically trained dancer and I've been dancing like my whole entire life. So since I was like a little kid to obviously like now I've always been in the dance world of things. So music, musicality has always kind of been a part of my life. Um, and now when I was in first year, yeah, it was first year, I was studying dance and music majoring in classical ballet and contemporary. Um, and westernized music wow. college. Yeah. <laughs> so very, very different. Well, not very different, but, you know, a completely different kind of performing artist space. Um, and then mm -hmm. I jumped. And then when my mom was still around, she, my sister and I would always, like, move the couches in our lounge. And we would pretend mm -hmm. like we were DJing at a festival and we would dance around. So I was, what, I was 18 at that, at that time. Okay. And... Um, I guess my mom kind of saw that we were quite good at just pretending how to play music, but we had an ear for, for music and the energy, which is something that I'm really big on when it comes to DJ, was there. And she really like um, motivated me and inspired me to be a DJ. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it wasn't something that I was actually thinking about when I was dancing because I was really focused on being a prima ballerina, you know? Um, wow. And, you know, you really don't have time when you when your life is dancing. You have no time to basically do anything else. You really have to. I was dancing eight hours a day. Um, <laughs> at is it really that day. hectic? Hey, is it that hectic? It is hectic. It is hectic. Like when it comes to dancing and especially ballet, it's like you have to put in those ten thousand hours. If you're not putting in those ten thousand hours, um, practice does not make perfect. Do you know what I mean? So I was really putting in those hours and it was also required for me to put in those hours and it was really hectic. I couldn't do anything else with my time. I had to be in studio. My brain was kind of also just focused on trying to get the right like technique and um, instead of really enjoying like music. So eventually um, I stopped dancing because it really wasn't making me that happy anymore. Um, and then my mom kind of said that I should go and be a DJ and I was still like, okay, where do I even start? And then unfortunately she passed away. And when she passed away, I really felt like I could actually just go and do whatever I wanted to do because she was always inspiring me to just basically go out there and do whatever the fuck I wanted to do. It was always like, whatever makes you happy, go and do it. You know, no matter what it is, if it's being an artist, great. As long as you make money from it, baby girl, go and do it. Um, so yeah, and then I joined, I, there's something called Pussy Party, which is 
a beautiful, beautiful set of space with Colleen, Lexi, and Spum. Shout out to my babes. And basically, Colleen is the co-founder of, um, or founder rather, of Pussy Party. And she taught me how to DJ. She started doing these DJing workshops for femmes and queers. Um, and she gave me my first lesson. And I just kept asking her every week, can I please come and practice? Can I please come and practice? Please can I come and practice? <laughs> And I just, I really loved it. Like just that feeling, I just had that feeling like for once in my whole entire life of proper freedom um, and expressing myself as an artist through, through art, you know? And like, I, I was so obsessed with that feeling. I just, I can't explain that feeling, but I was just so obsessed with feeling that feeling when I was DJing, even if there was no one on the dance floor, because usually we would have our sessions at like 2 p.m. <laughs> um, <laughs> So yeah, and then I just couldn't stop. Um, I just kept practicing and practicing and finding more music and realized that I just really loved it so much. And then I started like DJing in front of people and realized that they really loved me and I loved them. And it was just a beautiful relationship. And here we are. <laughs> wow, man, you know, that's, that's a very inspiring story. Um, and before I get to my question, God wants to know, you think that there's pressure for female DJs to look beautiful all the time as opposed to male DJs and why do you think it's like that? Yeah, I definitely think so. I think in, in all um, artistic spaces, you know, they don't really look at females when it comes to like our skills. There always has to be something backed up with our skill, you know. If you're beautiful, it works. Yeah, and you're beautiful. Do you know what I mean? Um, I almost feel like when it comes to anything that has to do with like male skill, there's not that much pressure. It's kind of very lazy. It's very, very lazy, if I can put it in that way, you know, without offending anybody. It is lazy. It's, it's a very lazy, like, oh, you can do No, it's true. Um, whereas with females, it's like a lot more. You have to be able to do this. You have to look good. Because if you don't look good, then it's not appealing to the eye, you know. Like, is she wearing lipstick? Does she have makeup on? Like, how, what does her body type look like? And it, whether it's art, whether it's in the workspace, like corporate workspace, whether it's in the streets, whether you're working in like a restaurant or whatever, we always get sexualized as females to look a specific way. Even when it's online, like when we're, when we're on social media, like it's always about what do you look like as a female? We're always judging females for getting plastic surgery. Oh my gosh, she doesn't have makeup on this day. Can you see that? How does her skin look without makeup? You know, it's all of these pressurized things. So yeah, there is, there is a lot of pressure. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of pressure. I'm not going to lie. And for someone like me, I'm not going to lie. Like I actually feel, because I embrace my beauty, I never really feel the pressure, do you know? Um, I kind of just go out there and I, and I walk the walk and I talk the talk. But I know for a lot of other females, they really do feel the pressure of looking a certain type of way um, just so that people can listen to them. And you can also see, like, I know for a fact that I do have it quite easy because I am beautiful. And I'm not saying that no one else is beautiful, but I know that I have these type of eyes that, you know, they're quite enchanting and they just draw people in and my smile and obviously the rest of my hair. Um, so I do feel like I have it easy when it comes to the pressure um, because people are immediately drawn to me. But I know for a fact that there are so many females that come to me and they're like, how? And I'm just like, just be, you know, but they still like, you can feel that they feel the pressure of how. <laughs> and I can't tell them how, you know, I, I can't say, I can't say how, I, I just say like, just be, you know, and it's, it's tough. It is tough. Because sometimes people don't even listen to me because they're looking at my face, which is even, which is worse. Like I've had really <laughs> shitty experiences with, with guys who don't care about my, my like art and my craft. They don't care. They don't want to hear they're like really no I, i'm not gonna name i'm not gonna yo i'm not gonna name because whoa you know but yeah I've had some no really i'm just surprised i'm just surprised industry, just some really hectic like people within the music industry that are high up there that um yeah that genuinely like if i'm not down for the for the for the down downs then they don't want to know you know um, mm. And that's when I feel like my beauty comes at a downfall because it's like, oh, crap, if I could put a brown bag over my head and show you what I have, have to offer, 
it would be so much better because you wouldn't be looking at my face, you wouldn't be looking at my ass, you wouldn't be looking at my like hot body. You'd be you'd be looking at what I have to offer. You know, you'd be feeling my energy. So yeah, <laughs> pressure everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and 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 God was is asking you about you know how how comfortable you are with your body, and I was going to ask you that also because I've realized that your Instagram page you have a lot of images when you show off your body <laughs> the other day on instagram you know you were twerking teaching people how to twerk so yeah just tell us about that you know yeah so when it comes to um just i guess the confidence you know like i was once again i was brought up and i grew up in a household where it was all about just being you know like it was really i was really encouraged by my mom to just to just be and not really have to look at like how do you feel when you're when you're just being, you know? Um, and so I guess that's where the confidence comes from. And I I really love the fact that my confidence inspires so many other people to be confident, you know. And that's really what drives me so much. It's less of like how I feel when when I'm posting nudes, and more about like making other people feel comfortable, you know. The more I post nudes and the more I'm quite creative about also how I can post them and what I'm trying to get across, the more I get messages. The one time I got a message from, from a honey and she said um, she woke up that same morning. What, when was the nude that I was posting here and I was doing this? Uh, yeah, I, I remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And she, she said to me, um, before she had even seen the nude, she said she woke up that morning and she tried to take pictures of herself like naked in the mirror and this like this like comfortable sort of like aspect came with it but then there was a bit of fear as well with just the vulnerability of being completely naked with herself and just taking pictures you know because sometimes we want it to be perfect i won't lie like the amount of times I have to self timer for 10 seconds, run, pose, and then like, I'm like, ah, oh, damn it, my, arch, my back isn't arched enough, you know, like, it is, it yeah. is something that you kind of wants it to be perfect, but um, you fall in love with your body, you really do, and she basically said that she, she took those pictures, then later on in the day, she saw I posted a nude, and there was just a sense of, like, fearlessness that was just brought over her from seeing my nudes, you know, especially because she had kind of gone through that process in the morning of basically being naked. And being naked and taking pictures of herself is really not an easy thing, you know. It It's really yeah. not easy. Like, it feels... It just feels bare. You feel really, like, bare. Um, but it's such an important self-love part and journey of life. Like, the amount of love that you have for yourself, the amount of love that you have for each and every scar and every like little bump that you have here and it's just a beautiful feeling to have to like just be like actually fuck everybody I love myself I'm good if y'all don't love me that's okay I don't need y'all because you don't wake up in my body in the morning um, mm. and yeah like I really I really like want to inspire and motivate people to just feel themselves like just feel themselves feel themselves yeah. completely I, and and I can just imagine how difficult it must be because South Africa is just, is such a conservative country, you know. We're very like, you know, religious and all that. And here you are being a free spirit, you know. Um, and also the way that you dress as well. Like, how, how, like, have you ever been out in public and people go like, you know, they comment or they say something negative to you? Have you ever been in that situation? Or about your pictures online or something? Well, that's the thing, like. I, like I said, I really have it easy, <laughs> you know, I really have it easy. And so I use that easy platform to do and push so many boundaries because I know for a fact that um, I work quite hard or I've, or I've always been active. So, you know, I'm quite toned and I've got a good ass and my legs are nice. So there's not really much, like there's not really much space for anyone to come to me and be negative, you know, because you'd probably be the only person in that room like who's, who's being negative about something that you shouldn't be negative about. Um, so I, I definitely get like looks sometimes, like I'll get like judgmental looks, but most of the time it's very funny because the looks kind of, it's almost like I'm, 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 uh, what's the word? I'm, uh, 
addressing an issue. I'm having a conversation with someone, mm. but they're having a conversation with themselves. Do you know? Mm. I often see it in people's faces. Like they'll look at me and you can see that they're probably like judging what the hell, like how does she, how does she, but in their heads, they're also going, damn it, I wish I could. Damn it, I oh. want to. Do you know mm. what I mean? Like, I, and it's that kind of like conversation that I enjoy. I enjoy seeing people have in their face. Um, mm. So I continue to dress like with my booty shorts and my crop tops um, and also the freedom of doing it and having the confidence to do it also shows people that you can do it. You know, they see me and they're like, wow, she looks like she doesn't give a fuck. And she looks beautiful. So yeah. what makes you feel like I should give a fuck about like, what other people think about me? You know? So yeah, I really have it easy. I mm. do have it easy because not a lot of people say negative things to me at all. I really don't. I, I get a lot of like beautiful comments, a lot of people crying sometimes coming up to me being like, oh my God, I really wish I could. <laughs> yeah, I do. I get crazy things. That's time. deep. <laughs> <laughs> Very deep. I get people That's like deep. pouring out their like lives just because I'm like half naked. <laughs> it's like, okay, babe. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, I've I've seen I've seen you DJing, eh? and then while while you DJing, you also infuse that with dance music, and I guess it 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 becomes from your background of dancing. So I want to know, like you know, when when you're on the stage DJing and dancing at the same time, like where where where's your mind space at? Because I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, my mind. It's so weird because. A lot of people think I'm very, like, a lot of people think that, like, I'm so, like, I'm on it, you know. But in my head, I'm always like, oh, my God, did you just do that? Why, why are you on the floor? Wait, are you doing the splits? Yes, you have not stretched, stretched enough to do the splits. Why are you down here? And then it's like, okay, the song is almost ending. Okay, great. Okay, let's go back. Okay. So it's, it's like, it's always, I'm always having a conversation with myself about like what I'm doing at that point in time um, or I'm thinking about the next track or I'm thinking about not tripping and falling or I'm thinking about where's my arm, where's my leg or I'm thinking about, oh my God, don't look at people in their eyes. That makes you so nervous. <laughs> um, but most of the time, I'm really just enjoying myself. I really am. I often halfway through that thought process, I stop and I'm like, okay, hold up. You're here to have fun. You're here to share some beautiful energy. So just go out there and just do that. And then I start jamming with the people. Yeah, and you know, what's your favorite music to jam? Is it, is it Afrotech? Yo, quite a lot, I would say. Like, I don't have... I mean, obviously, house as dance and house music is like a, is like a, like an umbrella bracket. Um, mm -hmm. But I really don't have... I don't have a specific... It really depends on my mood. Um, it is quite hard to dance to Afrotech in a way because it's quite fast. But specifically with Afrotech, I enjoy doing a lot of acrobatics. Um, so like flips and like kicks and yeah. anything that you, it, just, it works with that. Um, and then when it comes to when it comes to like techno, there's this like step that people do. It's just like I don't know. It's like a jamming step. I don't know how to explain it. Um, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, you know that. You know that. Yeah, there's that step. Um, yeah. And with like old school house music, it's really about the groove, you know. It's like really about like the groove of like, oh yeah, you guys know this tune, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it depends, I guess. But I enjoy all of it. Like I don't have a specific type. Yeah, and, and, and also you're an MC as well. So I've, I've always been curious, like, can, can you flow maybe like on a beat or poetry or something like that? <laughs> um, I, I've tried a few times and my brain kind of moves like too fast for my mouth. <laughs> so mm. it is pretty hard for me to do that. But I think I'm really just good at, um, if I slow it down, because I talk pretty fast. If I slow it down, I'm kind of able to speak on a track more than like, flow on the track does that make sense yeah so, it does like, like lazarus man i'm sure you know that lazarus man he's a poet yeah um, yeah yeah, yeah. So he he, he kind of inspires me a lot when it comes to being able to just speak over a track um yeah and it's so i would definitely love to do that kind of 
that kind of flow um one of these days <laughs> it will, it would be very interesting to like hear a song that you you produce or you know a song that comes from you have you ever considered doing anything like that yeah i've actually been in this like space for about two years now of trying to release some tracks um at the moment i go to bed with these crazy beats and these crazy tracks in my head or i'll be like taking a walk and i'll just have this crazy like track in my head that i've just mm -hmm. just randomly created um so it's really more about trying to get the technicalities of it down so being able to actually just compose music and putting all the beats together um mm -hmm. and getting whatever's up here down you know but i'm really excited for that journey because it's it's a lot of the time like i'll make a beat in my head and i'm like yeah that's that's so you that sounds like you you know um so yeah one so you <laughs> yeah you you are a producer then you know and you should do it you know we are, i i can't wait to hear you know what what you do there is pressure a lot of pressurizing me <laughs> <laughs> no i mean i think it's it's uh, it's the energy that you give out to the world you know yeah. um yeah. you give out a lot of like creative energy and i guess you know the people just kind of like feel it and feel like oh you know you're creative so maybe they yeah. just you know what i mean yeah so yeah man but anyway whenever you're ready no pressure <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i'm here it's nice that people are like waiting <laughs> but it's also scary because yeah. i'm like damn okay y'all are waiting um but that's the <laughs> thing about being being an artist like we need to the reason why we have so much fear when it comes to releasing anything whether it's hey lads hey look at this joint <laughs> i was just talking about lazarus man <laughs> um mm -hmm. when we when we release anything whether it's like a dance routine whether it's a like a poem whether it's music we have to realize that we have to start from the bottom and a lot of us kind of feel like when we start we have to start at a really high level um yeah. and then we get scared because we're like oh my gosh what if it's not as good as we hope it is and it's like no just start because from there you'll always grow and so that's where I'm kind of at when it comes to the production of my music I'm just trying to think okay cool just start baby girl and then you'll just grow from there you know it'll just yeah. yeah and and you know who is your favorite dj like the benchmark for you you like yo i want to be like that person <sighs> it changes a lot. I have like a lot of people under my umbrella that really inspire me. Um the name like a few um Sebastian Leisure. He's amazing. There's Abby Nyura, my girl. I love her so much. <laughs> Abby is mm -hmm. amazing. Um Ero Manello, Ero Ero knows. Ero Manello. Listen to Ero Manello's like his own music. You'll die. Like I I die over Ero Ero's like just his DJ and his music completely because he's just a boss as human being. Floyd Levine also I love really I, I love the remixes. You uh you right you like no, the remixes that he makes for other people's music like Ero Manello. I always go like oh, oh Ero, whenever yeah. You must yeah whenever music, when... it's ten times better. Okay, I'll check. I I feel I've been taking time to actually check out. his music but i like mm. the remixes that he makes for like everybody else so that's yeah. very interesting but anyway yeah you 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 were still continuing yeah sorry about that well also with ero um with the one thing that i really like about ero is the fact that he has no limitations in terms of what he produces within the spectrum of dance and house music so has has he's got a very high like up tempo but all of his tracks are so different to one another you know you can kind of hear okay that sounds like ero but they're so different and i really love that authenticity like i don't think anybody can steal his style you know and that's like really beautiful because as much as i really like afrotech um eek, uh, i'm going to say this but i feel like a lot of the a lot of the sounds you know they they sound the same you know they, it's they yeah. sound the same you know so they don't sound the same like i don't want anyone to come for me at saying that but i you know what i mean like Ero yeah. music really takes you on a comp like you could do a whole like hour mix with only him and it's just going to sound like you mix in different like producers and DJs um him and yeah. FKA FKA mash i mean we all love FKA mash we yeah. like we bow down to FKA and like Kid Funk Julian Gomes 
Yeah, man, the list is so long. <laughs> it's so long. I'm you always know, also discovering new people as well. So you just mentioned like uh, a lot of dope local DJs, you know. Um, and do you think I was talking to someone the other day? Do you think that South Africa has too many DJs? I mean, I don't know what too many is. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's almost like saying, do we think that we have too many um, PR, like PR people and humanitarians, and do we have too many like accountants? You know, it's it's something that we need. I think I think it just becomes over, overly saturated because we don't have that many spaces that allow so many DJs to play. Do you know what I mean? Like, if we had more bars and more clubs that allowed so many DJs to play, and like where we'll also be able to like, hey, everybody, then it would be so like different. We wouldn't really be feeling the overpopulation of DJs because we do have a lot of DJs. We do. Um, we have a lot of female DJs as well. We've got so many female DJs like that people also don't know because obviously a lot of men. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think we've got a lot of DJs. I definitely do. <laughs> You know, it's, it's funny that you mentioned the female, that we have a lot of female DJs, but the only place where I see a lot of female DJs is Bram. Like, yeah. if we move out of Bram, you know, we don't see them. Like, why mm -hmm. is like that? Are the only, uh, is, is, would, would you say that Bram is the place that has a lot of female DJs or we just don't see them everywhere else? Why, why is it like uh, that? Well, the thing is, when you jump into... Um, if you go, if you step outside of Brown, we're stepping into a very commercial space. We're stepping into commercial clubs. We're stepping stepping into commercial bars, and that means that you. And that already, for me, it already means that it's dominated by men. Do you know what I mean? And so the thing about Brown, Brown is obviously a very creative space that allows people that are underground people that are upcoming, people that have already kind of made it to whatever level at the top there, to still share what they have. It allows for so much more than your taboos, your sumos, your rose band clubs, because there's just not that much, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just not that much. Like, and even if, yeah, I don't know how to explain it that much, but it's just like the spirit of Brahm allows so much freedom and um, I feel like a lot of people find themselves, I mean, I found myself in Brown. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. as a yeah. growing artist, I really did. And um, it's also, it also helps for it to be a very queer, very queer and femme space. Yeah. You know? um, when it's queer, you'll find a lot of females. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And because Brown is also such an artistic space, you will find queer, artistic, females all in one space you know mm -hmm. where now when you step outside of ground there aren't that you don't really hear that many like queer parties happening you don't really hear yeah. about as you said as you don't, you don't hear about like a lot of djs you know people won't also know like like bouncers aren't that like clued up about um about gender like about gender based stuff you know like what I identify as. We're talking to a bouncer at Taboo about what you identify as. That bouncer is going to be like, bitch, what? <laughs> you know, yeah, that's, you know, <laughs> that's interesting. You know, Bronx, people are like, okay, cool. Okay, okay, okay. You know, so it's, yeah. <laughs> it's Brahm and Lausch, I never, it does. Yeah, yeah. I never, I, ne I never thought of it that way before. But now, now that you mention it, 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 it makes a lot of sense, you know? Mm. It makes a lot of sense because if you go to Taboo, you know, they are very like set in their ways and uh, not just taboo like all the other you know places all of them and they're like 100%. yeah and Bram's the only place where even the audience uh, people that go to Brahma are open-minded you know uh if you go to taboo you, people are going to say yo play i'm a piano yeah uh, whatever like, at the time you know <laughs> it's gonna be the same stuff you? every week every week it's the same stuff and i'm not like putting it down in any way but i do feel like we need to open up those spaces. You know, we need to open up, like, obviously, Brahm is also saturated with a lot of students and students, millennials, whatever generation is coming in, we switch up and we change, you know? But when it comes to, like, anything outside of that, it's very corporate and, like I said, very commercial. So, I mean, a lot of us are trying to step outside of that space and take a lot of our events and gigs into those spaces. And we have started doing that. Um, so it's growing, but yeah, man, <laughs> slowly. <laughs>
Yeah, uh, Lucia says, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Check out Don't Call. I don't know what that means. Don't Call. Check out Don't Call. Is that an artist? Probably. And then uh, Lucia says, really the same opportunity as men. Oh. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, it's very true. The music world is dominated by males, 100%. It is. But we're coming. We're taking up space. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys, you know what? You guys, women must just release music. Yo, release uh, music, take yeah. space. You know what I mean? That's how you take off. And also host your own events as well. And shout out, shout out to the Pussy Party movement. Yeah, um, and Boys Club. Boys Club. Have you heard of Boys Club? No. What's Boys Club? So, um, we have... I'll send you the... I'll send you the... Um, the the handle but to everybody mm -hmm. that is still here and to everybody that's still gonna watch this um me desiree and 10 oceans we started a group called boys club <laughs> it's really wow. three females three of us so it's me desiree and 10 oceans um and what we've basically done is we've started this boys club because we're sick and tired of all of these boy clubs around the world you can say forming boys clubs and really only giving each other opportunities and not wanting any females to infiltrate that space at all um and mm. what we want to do is we want to create a platform for females and for femmes um to obviously dj produce their own music host their own events um but still also use yay thank you for the follow <laughs> but still also use males to assist us through this process. Something very important that I want to talk about as well when it comes to like this whole domination of um, males within the industry is the fact that we're not trying to exclude men, you know? People get this very wrong. When they think about us trying to take up space, they think that we're trying to exclude men. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to exclude men, you know? I get inspired by so many, I mean, when I was mentioning the DJs, there's so many men on that on that list that inspire me you know and i i really want more men because because it is dominated by men to inspire so many women and to give a lot of women opportunities and to not look at women as oh they can't because they're females um and really to just like jump on the train take up space with us like can't we all take up space you know um, that's what we want so we really want to use like the lazarus mans the fk mashes the two of the songs um to Lani the warrior these are all our homies these are all our homies obviously within the space to assist boys club in helping other females also be able to use um the platform like wow well. so yeah it's 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 wow um, so yeah mm. no no sorry sorry are you saying <laughs> i was gonna ask you when when, we when, when, of... when, when, when is the next one happening <laughs> sorry i keep yeah, no, yeah. so we, we were supposed to we were supposed to host our first one on the twenty we were supposed to launch it on the twenty eighth of March. But obviously COVID was like no nah, babes. Um Um so that really sucked, but it really also it kinda helps us a lot because we can still build the brand and build what we're trying to do and what our intentions are as boys club out there to people um, and get a lot of people interested so when we do launch it properly we can like yeah we can actually get a lot of people on board you know because that's what we want we really want people to just like to that's why there's a play on boys clubs obviously like only it's only honeys in the group but um it, it doesn't once again it doesn't matter do you know what i mean it doesn't matter it's also like okay cool we also gonna build our own boys club then maybe maybe people will take us more seriously if we call ourselves the boys club you know, if they receive an email from the boys club, they're like, oh, okay, cool. A bunch of gents doing, doing some awesome things. And then, like, they meet us and they're like, okay, honeys. But they've really given us the opportunities, you know. It's, it's that, really that, like, tongue-in-cheek of playing around with current issues that we have, not only in South Africa, but around the world, but mainly in South Africa. Mm. Look, that is, that is a genius concept, a uh, very interesting name. And uh, I I can't wait for 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 you guys to go to first event. Yeah, I, I, I'll I'll be I'll definitely be attending. You know. Yeah, I'll send you because, uh, Yeah, you know I'm a feminist, yo. Okay. Whoa. Slow but, down. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe you guys can do something online in the meantime. You know, maybe have yeah. like a, you know. 
We're um, trying to host um, a live. Um, we're going to be doing that pretty soon um, where we can obviously like post like individual mixes so that you guys can also hear like just the different sounds that we have. Obviously, it still is under the dance house music genre. Um, mm-hmm. And just, yeah, get the ball rolling. But you should just give us a follow and check out what Boys Club does. And like, we are also really trying to get into community work as well. It's really not about just being awesome female DJs out here trying to like kick ass and take up space. It's also really about going into different communities, whether it's rich, whether it's poor, whether it's middle class and inspiring females to just like do it, you know, like we mm. need more females to be out here in, in spaces saying to honey, like, come on, come, come, let's go. Let's, let's teach you how to DJ, you know? Um, mm. Cause that's the only way you're going to do it. Like I got taught by Colleen and it's just so like, I mean, I also, I've had like Lenzo who's a male, like teach me here and there. But just being like being taught by a female in a male dominated industry is just so empowering. It's so mm. empowering. Wow. And you know, and on a lighter note, um, male DJs have this reputation of being players, right? So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean What yes. about what what about female DJs? <laughs> Do, well, I mean, if, you know what, at the end of the day, um, whether you're a DJ or whether you're a bartender or whether you're whatever it is, like you will, I guess you, life is life. You can be a cheater, you might not be a cheater. But yeah, like I'm not here to speak for male DJs about whether they cheat or not, but I see a lot of things, you know. Um, I do. I mean, as a DJ, you, you, you're you always out, you know. You're always with the boys, you're always with whoever, you're getting free alcohol, like you're the star of the show, you're this, you're that, and I I don't know what it is. I can't say for them like what it is, but it is a thing. It really is a thing. Like if if someone comes to me and they're like, ah, oh, my man's a DJ and he's a cheater, I'm not surprised. Like I'm not gonna be like, oh shit, really? You know? Um, but I think also females most of the time we're focused on like kicking ass and like just taking up space and also like people don't take us seriously so it's just it's you don't get the same type of like feedback <laughs> but i'm not saying anything about male djs either <laughs> oh wow oh, wow okay i i just i just thought that's interesting you know because you know when 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 you you're a guy and you say you're a dj and the first thing is like oh you're a player you ain't shit blah 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 you know, where with females, it's like the complete opposite. It's like, oh my word, yes, girl power. And I'm like, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Also, most of the time, we have our men with us there. You know what I mean? Like, you barely see a guy Ooh. who's got a girlfriend. Like, you'll barely see his girlfriend. You, you might see her like once or twice. And I'm only speaking from experience. I'm not speaking for all like the like the like the male DJs out there. You know, you'll probably only see their girlfriends once or twice, or you'll hear that they have a girlfriend. You didn't even know they've had a girlfriend, but they've been jawing like all this time. You know, and, and but most of the time, with, like females, our men are there. Uh, you know, like our, you'll see our men there standing in front, like because they're also out there, like mm, which nigga trying to jump on this train. <laughs> Is it is it difficult to be in a relationship when you're a female DJ or when you're in this entertainment industry? Um, yeah, like I guess so. I'm not in a relationship now, and I feel like I'm a completely different person. Um, but in, with my past like relationships from being like a performing artist, it's been interesting. It's been quite interesting. I guess I'm also not your typical performing artist. I'm not your typical DJ. I'm not your typical like dancer. You know, there's a lot of nudity. There's a lot of like talking shit and there's a lot of like attacking issues that are real you know so um it's been i wanna like there have been a few tough times where like you can see that like my ex is uncomfortable you know um but also understanding that there's an intention and there's a reason behind what i do so and they're like oh well i love her i got her you know but you can see like a lot of insecurities a lot a lot (laughs) <laughs> so like how, but how, how do you solve that though how do you if, 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 if someone must come to you and ask for advice 
Yeah, like that's the thing. Like it's just like it's just you know it's it's like it's just not like it's also like you need to know who you're dating. You know, you need to know who you're dating. Mm. So when you know who you're dating, you're able to already figure out like what situations you're gonna get yourself into. You know, um, but if you don't know, then you're you're gonna die out there because it's a dog eat dog world. You'll have like. Like my like, I remember my man would be standing right next to me, but there's still guys trying to hit on me and like, like crazy things, you know. Um, you just gotta know. You gotta know what you're getting yourself into. <laughs> wow. Would you would you would you say it's better to date in the industry where someone would understand, maybe a fellow DJ or a fellow entertainer or whatever you know anybody in the space because then they'll be able to understand no it's a job or would you say no it's better to date someone who's outside maybe an accountant or whatever which one yeah. would it work um in my experience you know because uh, i've dated both sides it really depends on the person it really depends on how open-minded the person is about who like the world and who they're also wanting to date um because i've dated a corporate person and they were quite open-minded but also you could see that there was a bit of like uh, uh, uh. and then i've also dated a complete artist who was open-minded but very rigid do you know what i mean in terms of like accepting and understanding like how the industry works so it really depends mm -hmm. on the person like it does but i do feel like artists should understand a lot more because they know what like what's happening in the world of artists, you know. But it depends on the person. It really depends. Are you insecure? Are you not? How open minded do you really think you are? Because people think they're open minded until they get faced with the situation and then they realize, okay, shit, I don't know how to deal with this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. Yeah, no, I feel you, man. Uh, we've, got, we've got four minutes left. Uh, yes. I just have a couple of more, a couple of more questions for you, ne? So, this is this is like the technical questions now with equipment. Pioneer or new mark? Next. Pioneer, definitely pioneer. Right. Why oh, pioneer? It's user friendly. It's so user friendly, and like it just feels like everything is there for you to like touch. When you touch this, it does what it, what like what it should be doing. Do you know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I love. We all love pioneer. Pioneer forever. <laughs> Laptop. Or Dex? Dex. 100% Dex. Yeah. Ah. And then, do you, oh, well, how do you feel about people that play with laptops? Because I'm just it's okay. judging. I'm like... Yeah, I used to judge. I used to judge. I used to judge until I... Until I, like, I used to play at EFC gym and they didn't have equipment, so I had to play with my laptop. Mm. You know? Um, mm. Less that you can do, it really just feels like you're clicking, putting that track in queuing it, great, that track and queuing it, there's not really much like happening, you know, you don't get yeah. to play around as much. So yeah, okay. I'm not gonna judge anyone that plays on the laptop, but it's better to play with decks. Okay, sync button or old school queuing? Old school queuing, we don't want no sync. <laughs> You gotta know how to. You gotta know how to queue because when you get to a gig and there's a CDJ that's 300 years old, and you have to manually mix, you gotta know how to mix. Also, when you manually, when you manually know how to mix, you know your tracks, you know music so much. Your musicality is so on point. There's something that has to do with like perfection of just knowing each beat, knowing how to do it manually. Like it's just perfect. It's so perfect. You know, you have to. It's just. It's just, it's part of it. If you want to be a good DJ, you should know how to manually mix, not sync. <laughs> mm. Yeah, wow. I'm very that's, big on that. I'm very big on that because musicality is important. That's people very, pay for that's musicality. A, that's very controversial because some people just sync, you know. Of course sync. they do. You know, we can crop in things nowadays. Um, vinyls or CDs? Ah, vinyls or CDs. Well, that's an interesting one because I don't think you can really compare um, vinyls and CDs because CDs can also be compared. You can kind of put CDs and memory sticks in the same category. Um, so yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah. Vinyls, yeah, okay. So vinyls. Okay, vinyls or USBs? 
Okay, so it's a completely different art. I'm so, I really want to get into vinyls. It's, it's so, like, it's a completely different art to being able to play digitally. Like, I feel like if you can DJ with vinyls, it's also about finding those, like, tracks on vinyls, you know, like, you know, with, like, like digital work, you can download the track quickly, export it, whatever. But when it comes to vinyls, if you're playing a 1990 whatever house track that everybody loves, and it's on a vinyl, damn, salutes, salutes, you know? Yeah. And it's also, your vinyls is another art, man. <laughs> Shout out to yeah. the vinyl players. <laughs> okay. I know, cool, man. Uh, let's, a minute left. Okay. Lastly, is there anything that you want to say that I missed, you know? That you want to tell people that you should that you they should know about. Um, I think just like yeah, as you can see, I'm a very free like person, and I really inspire a lot of people to be very free as well. Like, do what you want to do, play the music you want to play. Don't take song requests because that's the devil. Um, and just spread a lot of love. <laughs> spread a lot of love <laughs> and have fun while doing it. So the song request thing is is it's a nightmare. Oh, but you know yeah i i personally don't even care the music that people would request so that's the thing i often tell people i'm like do you have a usb and they say no and i say oh, i can't help you mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay yeah. thank you so much for your time Shout for out. the thank hour you. for the hour that you gave me i've learned so much about you i understand you better now Keep being you, man. You know, we really appreciate your presence, Yay. your energy. <laughs> Keep playing dope music. And yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right. Shab -shab, for everybody that, that watch, uh, that's watching right now, thank you so much. Signing out. Bye. <laughs> Bye.